The Unnameable is a horror short story by American author H.P. Lovecraft. It was written in September 1923, first published in the July 1925 issue of Weird Tales, and it was first collected in Beyond the Wall of Sleep. I'd like to start with a description of what H.P. Lovecraft described the unnameable as. It was everywhere. A gelatin, a slime, a vapor. Yet it had shapes, a thousand shapes of horror beyond all memory. There were eyes and a blemish. It was the pit, the maelstrom, the ultimate abomination. Carter, it was the unnameable. Welcome to this week's Two Guys and Some Horror. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about a movie um, that I personally put on the list I wanted to watch uh, for reasons that we'll get into in a minute. Um, And it's called The Unnameable. It's from 1988. It was directed by John Paul Ouellette, and the writer was also John Paul Ouellette for the screenplay based on H.P. Lovecraft's writing. So in this episode, we have one of the best co-hosts in podcast history. Clark, how you doing, buddy? Doing great, man. Doing great. Thanks for asking. How are you? Doing well. Um, pretty excited for this episode. What do you, what do you, uh, what do you think about it? You know, I, 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 I was actually pretty excited to watch this cause this is one of the few HP Lovecraft films I haven't seen. And I'm, I was, I actually have been, I used to be, I'm a big fan of his literary works. Um, but yeah, this film was okay. This, it was good in, in a very kind of like monster movie way. I like HP Lovecraft. I just... I've fallen out of love with H.P. Lovecraft. I used to really be in H.P. Lovecraft, but now I'm just kind of, yeah. I feel like nobody's done a good iteration of any of his works that a lot of the feelings I had towards the works themselves has kind of been lost. Like, uh, so I, 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 I actually have read most of his works. Like, I have, like, his complete collection, and I've read through it, and I love... I love uh, Into the Maw of Madness. I love uh, his stories of Innsmouth. I I don't remember everything off the top of my head, but uh, The Call of Cthulhu is definitely one of the best literary masterpieces. That's probably one of the most well-known, I think, as well. It's it's definitely his most well-known work, but um, no. It's, It's... He's a great writer, but I learned more about him too, and the guy's kind of a dick. <laughs> so, a lot of a lot of people like that are. Yeah, I fell out of, and I just kind of that didn't bother me as much much at the beginning because I I love Cthulhu. The whole the whole thought of these interstellar beings that can drive you insane or beyond our comprehension is really intriguing. It's like a level beyond where we will go in most fiction works. Like there's usually an explanation of something, or it's something we can conceive. But in the case of sanity, where you will lose something that is abstract to you, like your sanity or your knowledge, and you're not really understanding what that's like, but then you see mad people. Like, that's, I love that. That's perfect. It's great. But we have failed to kind of utilize that in any fictional, like, movie or anything else. Like, the lack of you actually having your imagination makes doing anything with H.P. Lovecraft's works just not work. <laughs> Do you have any quick I, reviews? I yeah, this movie was a, an episode of Scooby Doo. What? Uh, yes, it, this was Scooby Doo, and I've I've said this several times to you, but uh, to to explain, you have a group of teenagers who decide to visit a random haunted mansion, and they split up and they start and they start quite a saying. And meanwhile, the monster is chasing different people at different times. The kids are running around, just trying to get away from the monsters. Zany hijinks happen. The monster, like, randomly spares one or two of them. But, you know, the only thing you're missing is a talking animal. I actually like uh, your explanation. That it's, it's a lot funnier when you think about it that way. And yeah. um, even even the idea that it might be a supernatural thing, it might not be. 
where's the mask? There is no mask. But maybe there's a mask. There is no mask. You know, with Carter, how he tells him, oh, it's just Joel goof- goofing around. Or, oh, it's just the douchey frat guys goofing around. Or, oh, it's just it. like he always has. Well, maybe it's really not a, a monster. And then at the end of the day, no, like it's it's just a monster. <laughs> I like that. So the the screen of the film, right? The, the, or the, the cover of the film is a picture of the monster. Mm-hmm. Right? So we know what the monster looks like before we even start watching it. Yes. But the entirety of the film, they don't show her at all until the very end. And she looks great. Yes. I'm wondering if it was a makeup thing, but no, this they should have done as many scenes with her as they could have because it would have made the movie a bit better. So let me Yeah, I I I guarantee it was a how long they had to shoot and how much it took to get that makeup on and whether or not they had, you know, multiple casts ready to go for the monster. Because, I mean, some of the the fun facts and trivia kind of laid out there, but, like, it took nine hours to put that makeup on, the creature makeup on, and then the film was shot in three weeks. So, if they had to do that every Mm -hmm. day for nine hours to be able to get, you know, the film done, that would have extended their three weeks to at least another probably three weeks, would be my guess. Justin wasting getting the makeup on for her, but... Yeah, Make I mean, it is point. a sad, it's a sad shame, though, that we don't get to see um, the monster more often, because a lot of the shots are just the hands of the monster, which wasn't the full creature feature. Or makeup. the goat's feet. Or just the goat's random. We only see the feet or the uh, the limbs. We don't, we don't yeah. see anything else. Just, uh, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, let's see where to start. I mean, it's it had a very small budget, um, had a decent body count. Um, you know, the story's a little simple, I guess. Just a bunch of kids from a college who, um, decided to go check out this old haunted house. Um, and it just so happens that this monster named the unnameable, oddly enough, was trapped in the vault, uh, in a vault in the house by, uh, by an old warlock. And that's how the movie opens up with the old warlock kind of taking care of the unnameable. And then unfortunately he gives it too much of a leash and he gets hung uh, by the rope that he gave it. So he gets killed. And that that's, that's basically your open and your understanding of how all that kind of came about. His own hubris more, killed him. Yeah. We get some more exposition, I think uh, later on, but I want to talk just a little bit about why I picked this. Um, it's just kind of a weird movie. That's I've been hunting for this movie since I was, probably 10 my parents watched this movie and this is what i this is the movie i think it was i was 10 so i don't really know but they had um they had rented this movie at blockbuster and um i remember my brother and i were camping in our backyard so we set up a tent uh laid out our uh sleeping bags and we goofed around in the backyard late at night um as two kids would do in the summer and every time we came in to grab a snack or water or whatever my parents were watching this movie in the living room so we had to walk through the living room every time we wanted something and this was on and it scared the living hell out of me um and the reason why i remember it so much is because of that creature um when you see it fully stood up um you know wings kind of come out uh she's she's (laughs) she's screaming um it's that look on the cover basically of the movie and uh, I don't know, that just was kind of burned in my brain. And a couple months ago, I Googled uh, some keywords to try and find the name of the movie because I, I couldn't remember what it was called. And this is what came up. And after watching it, I'm pretty sure this is what it was um, from when I was 10. And so I'm kind of excited just because I found something that I've wanted to watch for a long time. and I just couldn't freaking remember what it was. And that's exciting to me. Um the movie's not good. I'm just going to like no. throw that out there right away. It's not like some write your friends, tell everyone all about it. It's Unfortunately, it's not that good um, at all. But it has some, I think, some shining moments. I think there are some really cool things about it. Um, and yeah, I hope Clark and I can kind of break that down for you guys in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. 
Oh, well, let's let's talk about this movie. Let's uh, let's kind of get into it. So, I want to talk about like, so the kids like from my my understanding like we talked about like a warlock, but it, the story is like a lady in the eighteen hundreds gave birth to a monster that the kids were talking about, and like the baby was too ugly, so they just named it the unnameable. Yeah. The so baby, the like, the warlock because um, it's well, it's Carter. Yeah, so they um, when the guys are burying his body in the beginning, uh-huh. um, they say the old warlock. Um, that, so they call him a warlock. He also That's is a male in witch. right. He's also in possession of the Necronomicon, right? Um, and has some other books, uh, like diary or journal books that Carter reads later on that kind of explain how he tried to. Um, he wanted to grow trees around the house because he locked this unnameable in the wood of the house so it couldn't get out. And he wanted to grow a deeper bond with the spirit, the tree spirits, so that way he could lock it in forever. But as we know, trees grow slow, humans die fast. He wasn't going to be able to live forever. That explains that weird ending. Yes. Yes, 100%. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. There's not a lot of, in my opinion, there's not a lot of questions unanswered um, other than what the hell was he trying to do in the first place that got him into this mess? <laughs> um, I think he was playing with some dark magic, didn't know what he was doing, and caused this unnameable to be born from his wife, killing her, unfortunately, and had to live with those, uh, you know, repercussions of what he did, which sucks. Yeah, oh, that's but, a good uh, way to look at it. Yeah. He was, he did fine. He was a fine actor. I thought he was probably one of the best actors in the film. Yeah, I I really like Carter, um, the actor who played Carter. Uh, did you did you do Mark Kinsey Stevenson? I I know he was very Shakespearean or very theatrical yes. with his acting. This, this movie played like a stage a stage play. <laughs> but I I mean I enjoyed him at least, and uh, his buddy Howard, whoever played Howard, uh, did a great job. Probably my favorite actor out of um, this group of actors. Uh, I just thought he was well composed, nailed his lines, um, and didn't really, you know, he never gave the wrong emotion. In my opinion, I thought I thought he nailed it as well. He had the delivery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think I don't really know how to dissect this because it's a very simple movie. Um, so I don't know. Maybe talk about. Let's talk about more about. Uh, Maybe some of our favorite scenes or some some favorite, uh, I don't know, man, kills. I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know about kills. I thought the one where she keeps slamming the guy onto the concrete was dumb. <laughs> this is like boop, 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 and I was like, is this guy doing sit ups? Yeah, poor Bruce. He just he just got his head smashed in the ground repeatedly and had no chance of getting out of there. I. Too I'm many curious, times. I'm curious about the effect. Like, what did they use <clears throat> for for the the for Bruce's character? Like, <clears throat> was it actually his head bouncing on that ground? I doubt it. But it looked pretty damn real. Like, I don't know what they used as a prop or a dummy prop or whatever for it. it yes, it was probably the worst kill in the movie. <laughs> they had to cut it out because of the rating, like the the scene itself. And I kind of hope, I kind of wish they kept it cut out because it didn't really work yeah it, it doesn't it's kind of pointless uh would have been goofy. better it's just goofy to see him like continuously slamming him down versus her like jamming her hand at the very beginning through a man's chest and ripping on his heart and then just dropping it and walking away yeah no that there's much better kills in this movie than that that was just sure. goofy yeah, it was just goofy yeah but what about you curtis what's your favorite kill uh, I think you just you spoiled it. Um, not even I on did. purpose. Uh, I think the yeah I think with the warlock dying at the very beginning is amazing. The just the fact the uh, the prop that they use in this for such a low budget film, um, it looks good. It looks really clean. I think all the gore in this movie actually looks really clean, and they did a really good job. Whoever was the like the effects person in this movie did a phenomenal job. It really helped. If that had sucked, this movie would have been a bomb, even more of a bomb. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I, I'll agree with you there. I don't, I don't see any reason that heart, the heart ripping out scene was very reminiscent of the uh, Temple of Doom. And, but instead, there's tons of blood, 
and just a dead body of an old man. So yeah, I don't know, man. Like it, everybody turns on each other too early and too weirdly. I they would say yeah. One another is a killer. Yeah, I think the only person who doesn't really give two shits is Carter. He's just there because he wants to know what's going on, and he has an inkling it's going to be good uh, for his like that, for his writing career. For Randolph, as yeah. well. And he's like, uh, he's like Randolph, they're all dead. And he closes the book, and he's like, that's to be expected. Yep. A dork. Or yeah, so so Randall Rand, Randolph Carter is, um, in my opinion, the main. Like when I'm watching this, he's the, my main focus of the movie. Whatever he's doing, yeah. whatever Carter's saying, uh, I'm I'm hooked. I'm paying attention. I I really thought that he was like the best person. But when you watch it uh, for the first time, you you might have a feeling that Howard um, is kind of your main character. I don't know. There's there's so just, just to differentiate. Carter's name is Randolph Carter. Yeah, they so call him Carter a lot. I Randolph. think that's why I wrote it yeah. down. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. So just so there's no confusion, what I say Randolph and you say Carter. Yeah. And then Howard is the best buddy who's friends with Joel. Joel is the first person who gets killed in our time in this movie. Our time being relative. But um, basically they're all talking about the unnameable. And Carter's giving this really like, I don't know, super embellishing story of the unnameable. And Joel's like, nah, bullshit, bro. That's not real. Let's go stay in the house. Where's the house? Show me the house. And Carter's just like, you've you've seen it a thousand times. It's right there. And it's behind them. Like, they're basically yeah. sitting in a graveyard. And the house is right behind them. And then, uh, yeah, so then Joel decides to stay in the house overnight. And that doesn't work out well. He ends up getting got. Um, but that I think that's, I don't know, that that just shows how how little people can can give care to like what are they called uh what's the name of them like old, old wives tales or or horror stories that you know hey avoid this place because it, it could be cursed or whatever it's like yeah you know in a movie people usually don't care but in real life if you told someone that they're gonna stay the hell away from that house you know they're not gonna go in there i don't know so where i'm going with that a lot of coitus that happens in that house <laughs> And the yes. jock is like trying to get coitus too, and he's like, "Hey, can I coitus with you?" And then he like tries to rape her actively. That was like, uncomfortable. Don't rape me! Don't rape me! Don't rape me! Don't. I rape might me. have a boyfriend. Like, but why? Again? Yeah, I don't. It's one of those like movies, rapey. It 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 is. It it shows a college frat guy. He's um, not the only rapey character. No, I mean, both of them are. Both these guys are. Bruce and, I think, John is the other guy's name. They are both yeah. super rapey. And unfortunately, John picked is it the... Is because of her big tits? <laughs> yeah. John picked the it's easier like, two what? of the girls, okay? John, John yeah. just picked the easier two of the girls. Tanya is... She has a little bit more, you know, that she's waiting out for. Wendy didn't. Yeah. Anyways, um, I cared way too much about this this movie story i think then i should have um oh my god okay so wendy and john are totally having coitus and then she like rolls over and as she's like moaning <laughs> she sees the face of joel ripped up <laughs> right next to her it was good and <laughs> she freaks out runs down the hall and then john's like john does the same thing he like lays back down and he's so upset that he's not gonna get to get any and then he realizes it's a dead head. But then she, so he doesn't follow her right away. She goes running down the hall. Boobs still flaying out of her top. Right, right. into Bruce and Tanya. Just basically like, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the modesty on this girl is just completely lost. She Look, has man, none. If I were running for my life, I would let my boobs flop up around too. How many oh, other my, horror oh, films my... have we seen where the girl at least covers up? You know what, man? I don't. Like, I would not be thinking of that. I think she did the right thing. She saved precious milliseconds of her life by running to safety. Yeah, only to later, wait. only to later try to call out Howard and make it seem like Howard was the one killing everyone the whole time. What a ah, what an idiot! 
Hey man, if I look terrified and I'm completely nude, just understand there's a reason behind it. And I want you to think that when you see that happen. Because it probably will in your lifetime. I think she's more horrified that she realized she made the mistake of trying to sleep with John. Anyways. Uh... <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know about that. John's so attractive. Anyhow, moving on. So, so Howard and Carter finally show up because they realize Joel's yeah. not, not coming back. He's still missing. His parents called to school because he's missing and was supposed to be home and whatever. And so this is all after that craziness. So Howard takes care of Tanya, who faints because when she opens the door, you know, it's two scary characters. This is why I agree with you 100% about the Scooby-Doo reference. Like, there's a lot of slapstick in this that I don't think is uh, – it's taken more seriously but has a very funny undertone. from Scooby-Doo as well. Yes. <laughs> the ending. Wait, where were you? Ah, oh, hell and back. It's literally hell down there. Um, yeah. God, but that was yeah, such a cool part said. too. That's what he said. That's what she said. Um, that made no sense. I really liked the – I, I liked that. I, I don't know. Carter's character to me, I would love to see number two now, part two, because it's all about uh, Randolph Carter. You mean um, our thespian of the group? Yes. He was very uh, much a thespian in his acting. He was very like a theater actor, talking like this for no absolute reason because I need to dictate what I say with proper grammar. So people, people have said that Randolph Carter's character in this movie – is also who is featured in some of Lovecraft's other tales. Um, there's one called The Statement of Randolph Carter that was written in like 1919. Um, so that, I, I just think that this was a big homage and a big circle jerk to H.P. Lovecraft, which I don't, I don't mind because I'm not, I'm not a big Lovecraft fan, but um, more and more I find out about stuff, it ties back to him in some way, shape or form. So that's really cool. Like the Necronomicon. Didn't know that was a Lovecraft thing for many, many years when I found out. Thought that that was amazing. Um, yeah, so I'm actually yeah. – I'm glad that you pointed that out because I don't remember any of this. I didn't. I, I guess I didn't make the connections. It looks like you're right. He's in seven of his works, seven of his short stories. Yeah, and they did an unnameable part two. Um, so there uh, is a sequel to this film. And the sequel is specifically the statement of Randolph Carter. So, like, I just feel like I'm going to get so much more of the character that I enjoyed. Um, it also I, looks – the monster doesn't look as good from the poster, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I can stomach it. I can deal with it. Um, it, it looked better in film than it does on the, uh, on the poster. Or yeah. Or the image. Yeah, but I don't think it's the same girl either who plays the creature in 2. Huh. It looks like she only did one. She didn't come back for the second one. And she was only picked because uh, they used a female for the hands or something like that. So they wanted to keep it consistent and used a female for the entire creature or something like that. Uh, I don't know that. Hey, th At you know, first, I, I don't have anything bad to talk about. So you got to bring something up. Spared... Let's talk about how she, why she randomly spares the dude. Because she's like in there murdering, and then she like pulls him along, and just kind of lets go and gives up. It's like whatever, fuck it. Fuck I have a like theory it. on that. So you're talking right. about the scene where Wendy is going to kill Howard with a sickle. Yeah. And yep. So she's on top like, of him. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm gonna kill her, and then she just kind of drags him, leaves him. So one, one theory could be that how she looked like she, you know somehow Howard bumped his head and and got knocked out, which I don't. I don't believe just watching that scene over and over again. I, I, I don't believe that. So that's one theory is that maybe she just thought he was, he was already incapacitated and she didn't need to deal with him. But if you're a crazy monster and you're wanting to kill people, you, you kill everything. It doesn't matter. But my reason maybe is, has, maybe has ahead. a moral code. It doesn't yes. kill prone people who are unconscious or take it further. Morally, he wasn't a bad guy. He didn't do anything wrong in this situation. He wasn't one of the two douchey frat guys trying to take advantage of the girls. And he wasn't Wendy, who was sleezing it up. Tanya also doesn't get attacked. She wasn't sleezing it up. I don't know. Maybe it does have a morality know, code. Dies. He she... still dies. She still dies. Wait, who? Don't they both die? Tanya makes it out with Carter and Howard. The three of them make it out. Okay. It just still doesn't make sense to me why she doesn't kill them. 
if there was a morality sense. thing, maybe it would make sense. But like the, it's just unanswered, and it's weird. It doesn't make sense. But she tries I, to kill them. She she does, but she, only after Howard goes and attacks the creature. Then the creature then starts to fight back and hit back. What we don't really see. <laughs> This freaking creature, I don't get it. It can go from one second to grabbing someone's head and snapping their neck to the next second can barely even move across a room. I don't know, man. Too too much story, like, or, uh, you know, film slowing it down just for the viewer kind of a thing. I There's a word for that. I, I can't think of it. Let's Ugh. talk about let's talk about what happens for the ending, like how, how the tree okay. gets summoned. Okay. Because <laughs> they're in the room with the demon and they're they're facing it. One of the characters found the Necronomicon in the house, and he, uh, Randolph Carter, Carter, he he finds it and he 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 reads through it. It's just I don't know. So he's reading through it and the journal, and he's trying to piece all this stuff together. Um, man, I really sound like a fan of this movie, and I guess I am in a way. I, you I are I, now. I do like this movie. Um, Scooby Doo. Uh, Scooby Doo for adults. Um, yeah, I love it. So yeah, so so Carter's down there in the study this whole time. Like Howard even asked him, he's like, "Hey, are you gonna come with me or not?" And he's like, "Nah, you go, watch her, keep her safe," kind of a thing. And then he's down there, and he's reading the Necronomicon. Um, I mean, this this is like this this whole moment embodies him. You know what I mean? Like this is what Carter was meant to do. He is so enthralled in these old um, horror history type things. That this is just this is it. This is all he can do. He's he's literally having a orgasm reading this book, and then he finds the journals from the old warlock, um, and that warlock has a name, um, and it's Joshua Winthrop, and that gentleman detailed everything about um, the kid that he had, who also has a name, Elida. And then, so so Carter then takes all that information and he's like, ah, I know what to do. And then he like dives down into the <laughs> the crypt and you don't know what he actually does. But all you can kind of allude to is that he summons the tree spirits, which is really just the dead spirit of Winthrop. And then... Winthrop the tree talks. grows, yeah, and talks to his daughter, and then defeats the unnameable. But, uh, but yeah, Carter had to go to hell, apparently, to do that. And I, oh man, I kind of, kind of wish I got a little bit more about what he did in his time in hell. You know what I mean? Like that would have been fun yeah. to watch, versus Howard not fighting the unnameable and just getting his ass kicked. But uh, budgets are budgets. No comment. <laughs> no comment. What did you think about the ending? So, like, you said that explains the weird ending earlier. Did you have questions about what the hell happened? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is there a tree? What the? It, none of this, I didn't make any of these connections until you said them. Like, as I was kind of half working, half watching the movie. And yeah, at yeah. the same time, like, I don't know. I Whatever Randolph talked, I was like... This guy's talking too too much like a Shakespeare actor for me to really take him seriously. <laughs> I, I didn't at all. Whenever he showed up, he kind of felt like the comedic relief, and okay, and then he just kind of climbs out of hell. And I'm like, when did he go to hell? So yeah, yeah. you missed some bits. Yeah. Well, it also doesn't help that I've seen this movie now twice because I watched him. I watched. Him uh, the last two episodes that we recorded, um, Man Behind the Curtain. I watched both of them last week, and then um, I got bored today, um, and I wanted something to kind of cheer me up because I was in a bad mood. So I put both these movies back on, and I'm in a much better mood now than I was earlier. So I think it worked. I think it succeeded. I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good but I'm also realizing movies. I really do like this movie a lot. I don't, I don't know why. Um, I think I'm a lot more interested now in the. Uh, H.P. Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraftian, I think is 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 a good term for it. Um, stuff so like Necronomicons, the Unnameables, uh, Cthulhu. I'll be looking into more of that stuff and seeing if we can get some uh, more movies like that on the show because I think I don't know. I think it's good writing. I think it's really cool. 
All right, well, that's all I've got for the synopsis discussion. Um, shall we move into the fun facts and trivia, or do you have that's... anything else? No, man. I, I, I sound and feel wonderful and great and happy and enjoy listening and talking about fun facts and trivia. Okay. All time, all day oh. long, in fact. All yeah. right, well, for those who listened <laughs> last week, we had six. That's the same number we got this week. Get ready. Fun wow. fact number one. It took them nine hours to put Katrin Alexandre's uh, creature makeup on. Uh, number two, the film was shot in three weeks. Number three, the script was written in seven days. That's insane. Okay, all all of these date things makes it seem like this was also uh, an indie kind of film. He may have ripped the lines directly from the short story. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, isn't that the easier way to go than writing your own stuff? I mean, how A dare lot of he? Randolph's statements f- sounded like they came from the 1920s. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, okay, number four. This is, uh, in my opinion, these last three are much more fun than the first three. Um, number four. A lamb's heart was used for the scene in which the monster tears a man's heart out. That was Winthrop. That was the, grand, the, the dad's heart. So an actual lamb's heart. Number five, animal entrails were used as guts in the film. Man, these guys went all out. They were using real shit. And number six, Laura Albert's film debut. Now, you might be I asking, don't know who, that is. who the hell is that? <laughs> she was Wendy in the film. I don't film. know who that is. She was Wendy. So she's the slutty uh, girl out of the she's two. She's the one with the great hair. Sure. She has had an amazing career as a stunt woman. So if you go to IMDb with me right now, folks, and you go to Unnameable, and you go to Laura Albert, and I want you to open up her uh, little profile page here, scroll down. She has 161 credits to her name for stunts. And, I mean, she's, she's been in so much stuff. Hawaii Five-0, Magnum P.I., Grey's Anatomy. I'm not really sure what she was doing a stunt for there. Workaholics, Lucifer, Nightcrawler, Shameless, Californication, Horrible Bosses, Fast Five. I mean, the ladies had an amazing career as a stunt woman. And I just got to say, like, too. yeah, she, she does. Um, but I, I just laugh because I see this movie, which had no stunt doubles, by the way. Um, and now I understand why they didn't need them. Like she, she probably did all the stunts for everybody because <laughs> she's so badass. Mm-hmm. Oh man! But her her um her tale of the tape for acting is also actually really, really solid. Um, lots of horror uh, mixed in throughout here. A um, little bit of stripping. She is definitely known for being a stripper. It looks like she had a niche there for a couple years. Maybe that's just one. Wow, she did all those in one year. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> and then. You know, she's on things uh, like Tales from the Crypt. She was a go-go dancer (laughs) in the Jigsaw Murders. She was a blonde stripper. Roadhouse, she was one of the strip joint girls uh, in the scene, in one of those scenes. I love that movie. Man, I'm getting way off topic here. But she's uh, she does come back to be in the Unnameable 2. She's a guest corpse, just so you know. Great. You always need a guest corpse. Uh, Yep. But yeah, no, hats off to her. She she turned an amazing career out of this this shitty of a of a of a, of a start in the unnameable. I like this movie. I know uh, I know a lot of you out there might might like it as well. So it was okay. It was okay. It was, it was I, okay. I, if you asked me to watch it, and I was like, eh, whatever. That's, Listen, if we're hanging out, having some beers, and I popped this on. It wouldn't be a movie that you're like, turn that shit off like Infinite Santa, okay? Not that bad. Uh, I want to watch Infinite Santa with you tomorrow, actually. Gross. So we'll have a cast party, you and me. Gross. And we'll actually put it at half speed, too. So that way we really get a feel for all those long-winded fight scenes. You know what, Clark? What have you <laughs> been up to lately? To my, <laughs> I wouldn't do that to my worst enemy. So there's a mini series HBO called Dead Like Me. Uh, you may have heard of it. Or it was Showtime, actually. I think I... Have you heard of this show? I have not. So it's about 
Grim Reapers. So it's a story of a girl who dies by toilet seat falling from a space station that murders her and she becomes a Grim Reaper afterwards. And it's a nice sardonic look on life and it, it's pretty real. And I was surprised it was made in like the early 2000s and I'm kind of wondering why I haven't watched it until now. It was really good. Interesting. Uh, you said dead like me? Yeah, so she essentially she's trying to, you know, she is averse to her job at the beginning, but slowly comes to terms with being dead, and it's her process of that. It was just, it's a cool concept, and I enjoyed it. Dude, Reaper is very similar. So this is that show I brought up when we were talking about Tucker and Dale, um, where it, it's the start of it's different, but he's a Reaper at the end of the day, and he's having a real tough time being a Reaper, and then has to like grow into the role and figure out how how to how to still do it because he has to do it he doesn't have a choice um but live with it in a way as well interesting and this is on hbo yeah, yeah and there's a lot of they, they make the deaths they try to make them funny in a dark way so it's kind of a dark comedy okay i'm gonna have to add this to my list of things to check out a new series about life after life and it's from 03 to 04 was its run two seasons okay Added, added to my watch list. Um, as for me, I, I haven't really been up to a whole lot. Um, you know, being stuck at home during the COVID stuff is it's kind of tough um, on finding new things to do. So um, last week I talked about playing Minecraft. Um, while I play Minecraft, um, I also am watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer still. So I'm kind of breezing through. That on Hulu, which is kind of nice. I guess I'm just kind of going through old stuff that I've uh, been wanting to rewatch or or watch the complete run of, and just knocking that kind of stuff out while I'm at home all the time. But my daughter rode her bike without training wheels for the first time this week, and that was really exciting. Uh, as a dad, that was cool. But yeah, man, nothing, nothing crazy. So still stuck at home, as we all should be. Time to plug some social medias. Hmm. Let's do it. Everybody, check us out. We are Two Guys and Some Horror. You can find us on Instagram. That's Two Guys Horror Pod. That's the number Two Guys Horror Pod on both Twitter and Instagram. And if you feel free, and if you'd like to give us any any feedback or comments, or you'd even like to guest star on our show, feel free to email us at Two Guys and Some Horror at gmail.com. And that's the full spelling for two. And you know we do, we do Curtis does a lot of cool things. He uh, he'll post uh, top tens, top fives from from things that are our favorites. He'll set up live live tweets, things like that. Um, and we usually kind of just ask questions and just try to communicate with everybody who listens to us. Heck yeah, I try to talk to you guys um, in the horror community at least once a day. Um, some days are harder, you know work life stuff like that but yeah i really enjoy uh talking with all of you on our social media so with that being said we're going to wrap up this episode um and just end it with hey we appreciate the f out of all of your faces every single one of you um we just we just enjoy talking to you guys and and letting letting us do this so thank you so much everyone thank you for uh checking us out catch bye -bye. you next time Bye-bye.